So, you have returned from Rome, Bishop Whaleran. Yes, it was a very illuminating time. What do you want? The Pope was very pleased to hear how I and you have worked together in the past to support our king. We did not do it for your church. He was less pleased, however, to hear about the bargain you struck with the Prior of Kingsbridge. Why should he care? Once and for all, we will not support you in your personal quarrels. The deal we made with the Priory of Kingsbridge has the blessing of the King. Of course, and you would never change your mind on that matter. Tell me, has your son returned from the Holy Land yet? We have not heard from him. Ever since he set out to join that crusade of yours. If he dies, your church will be responsible. Do not underestimate your son, Lady Hamley. That would be a great mistake. Not long now and you'll have a ceiling. Wonderful. Then we will no longer have to hold our services in the crypt. You could even begin to plan the paintings for the wooden ceiling and the walls. Why a wooden ceiling? So the whole thing goes up in flames again? Philip decided on that because it's cheaper. And these walls can only hold the weight of a wooden ceiling. I love you like a brother, Alfred, but the apprentice shouldn't have to tell the master craftsman things like that. Jack, for once, focus on your work and finish it. Just for once. Or you'll stay an apprentice for the rest of your life. Don't argue again. Alfred is right. This is a house of God. <sighs> All right. Now, where were we? You could start planning the paintings for the ceiling, if you wish. Can we afford that at the moment? We are paying so many workers already. <laughs> Father Philip. Tom Builder. Alfred. Ah, oh, Aliena. How are you? I'll be moving my wool to Shiring today. The Fleece Fair starts tomorrow. Ah, I almost forgot. Milius and I have already arranged everything. We'd make much more of a profit if Percy Hamley had not raised the taxes this week. Again? Earth. Jonathan, you shouldn't wander off. Stay with us. Tom is right. You hear? He looks like a real monk. Omnius Pluvius. Nominee, Patri, Amen. That sounds like Latin, but it's not quite right yet. We would not have to worry about this if we could sell our wool here on our market. The king would have to grant us a license for that. And the Hamleys wouldn't like that, I'm afraid. They want the taxes from the fair in Shiring. Don't worry, we'll make a good profit. It's a good year. We've never moved this much wool as it is. Uh, oh, and I have to build a new storage house. Alfred is a master craftsman now. If you can pay him, he'll help you. Ah, very good. If she hadn't a business of her own, I'd hire her to work for me. <laughs> she is something. She would make me a good wife. Hey! Hey, take that back! <laughs> What? 
What did I say? For the last time, stop your quarreling. Philip, let's look at the plans again. There's a problem I have to discuss with you. All right. Take that back, Alfred. Jack, leave him alone. And for once, finish your work. And Jack, please keep an eye on Jonathan, will you? What? Why me? <laughs> finish your work, Jack. <laughs> That's how it always was. But on that day, I didn't care. On that day, I was going to see Aliena. And I was going to tell her how I felt. And nothing and no one would stop me. small, I wanted something with animals. I tried to make it look like no other tree, more like a thought. I like it, but nobody recognizes that it's supposed to be a tree. Well, Tom says it's done. He won't let me do another one. Yes! I bet there are more nests around. Time to get this done. Nice. For some reason, I'm full of energy today. <laughs> but the face still isn't right. I can never get the face right. I'm done for now. I just can't stand looking at it anymore. Ugh. Watch your tongue. I will. Damn. I need to get much better at this. Everything all right, Jonathan? Jonathan, don't run off. Don't worry, he's here. Ah, great. Thank you, Martha. And no, I don't have time to watch him. Oh, damn. Oh, no! It's all broken! <laughs> the sounds of the market. Shouldn't you be working, Jack? Eh, maybe I should go before I buy anything. Watch where you go, will ya? Now it's come to that. Even the monks step on my chickens. Did you see Aliena? Hmm. Maybe she was heading home. I think she's expecting a visitor. A visitor? Do I hear jealousy in your voice? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. So, how's business? All well? More and more people keep coming here. Yesterday, there were two dozen merchants from Shiring alone. You exhausted? Pretty much. But the Priory made a lot of money. Seems the Earl just raised the taxes at his market, so they all came here instead. Now they've all returned to Shiring for the Fleece Fair. Is the Earl asking lower taxes at the Fleece Fair? On the contrary. From what the merchants told me, it's even worse. So they all have to trade their wool there, including Aliena and the Prior. But you need a license to do a fleece fair, and only Shiring has one. Are you not going to the fleece fair in Shiring? 
No, Philip asked me to supervise the market here. So now you're working with Philip and Aliena? I know, it's a lot of work. But we all want the same thing, after all. And what's that? To keep this place in good shape. This is our home. Yeah, I guess. You should be working too. I'm just taking a break. Do you want to buy some of this fine cloth, Jonathan? Great idea. I could make you a red robe. Or a blue one. No. <laughs> no, that would be silly now, wouldn't it? What is the colour that monks wear? Brown and black and grey. How do you get along with Alfred? He usually only talks to me when he wants me to cook for him. Why would you keep cooking for him? He doesn't have a wife. And he's my brother. I wouldn't ask you to cook for me. Jonathan wouldn't either, and he's your brother too. Jack, no one's supposed to know. Don't worry. He's a little monk. He is everyone's brother. Maybe I should get going. Oh, before I forget, I have a message for you. I think Ellen wants to talk to you about Papa. What's there to talk about? Tom doesn't believe I can be a builder. That's not true. That's what she wants to talk about. Papa knows what you can do. He told her. Oh, did he? Yes. He's complicated. He is. On days like this, you can almost get lost here. Did you finish your corbel? I'm done. Uh, why do I get the feeling that when I go and look at your corbel, it won't be finished? I'm doing my best, all right? If you would let me do more than just the statues. You need to focus on the task at hand. I can do much more than stone carving, and you know it. We can't always get what we want. Alfred can. Jack, please. We have much bigger problems to solve right now. The Earl of Shiring has stopped supporting us. If we don't do anything about it, we'll have to send the workers away. We have to stop building the cathedral. I will talk to Percy Hamley. And if he won't see me, I will talk to the King, or this will be the end of Kingsbridge. Can I help you? Yes, by doing as you're told. Do your job, and only your job. And leave Alfred alone. Good day, my ladies. Ha <laughs> ha, if it isn't handsome Jack. Have you come by to help, eh? Ha <laughs> Um, not really. Didn't think so. <laughs> After a day, your hands start bleeding. Piss and salt in the water will do that. Piss? Only way to get the grease and dirt from the wall. We can use a coin, but there's only so much pain you can take. Sooner or later, Aliena will have to look someplace else for fullers. I will find a way to help you with your hands. Well, as a start, then maybe you should get back to work as well. I'm just taking a break, all right? Don't always run off, Jonathan, or I'll get in trouble with... Aliena! Yes? Do you mind if we sit here? Uh, of course not. You two. Oh, um, well. Say, I, I wanted to uh, talk to you 
because... Yes, Jack Builder? I... I like you. You're beautiful. <laughs> Why, thank you, Jonathan. Well... 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 Jonathan! He's here! I'm coming! Jack loves you. <laughs> I was just about to ask if you think that Jonathan suspects anything. I swear on this very Bible that I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> cold! Cold, cold, cold. Oh, I lost my Bible. Shit! I'm sorry, but no bad deed goes unpunished. But we haven't done anything bad yet. You burned down the cathedral. My lady. You dangerous, feral beast from the woods. If God hates me for that, he, he has a strange way of showing it. feet in the brook lost in thought. Just like today. Why can't it always be like this, Jack? I know what you mean. I hate pretending that I don't love you. Then don't. Jack. I know. I know. <sighs> Have you heard from your brother? The war never ends, and he always needs more money. And I pay him to fight for the man who killed our father. King Stephen, to get the earldom back from him. Mm, yes. But you know, I don't even want that. Everything I've built here, what we have, I have all that because I'm not my father's daughter anymore. I'm afraid that... If Richard becomes Earl, I'll lose much more than the money he's wasting now. Hmm. Your father meant well. I'm sure he did. Did he? He never loved anyone. Not even my mother. It was not my fault we lost the earldom. It's not my responsibility. How could father make me swear that oath? Did you fight with Tom again? Tom always takes Alfred's side. Well, he is Alfred's father. He worries about him. It was the same with Richard. If Tom's worried about Alfred, then why is he always telling me off? Because you are the clever one. He probably worries about Alfred. Hey, it's not my fault that he's a, he's a bit slow in the head. Exactly. Tom thinks you should know better. Mm, maybe. Don't be cross with Tom. I think he wishes Alfred was more capable than he really is. He wants Alfred to be his successor, after all. Well, perhaps he could be if he only put his mind to it. I mean, even I could do it. <laughs> I'm sure you could. But who would want to build a cathedral anyway? Were you still reading the Bible? Oh, Philip insists. I better be angry that I lost it. Oh, don't worry. He'll still keep teaching you. I think he sees something in you. Oh, maybe I should become a monk. <laughs> oh, but but you, you aren't allowed to kiss monks. I shall love you like a brother, then. <laughs> no, that's not funny. <laughs> Say... What was that book called you told me about last time we met? The Amores by Ovid. 
I've only heard about it from a travelling scholar. Hmm, the title sounds promising. Yeah, but maybe it's not as interesting as we think. Let's find out. I'll ask around Kingsbridge and see what I can find. All right. You know, back in the forest, my mother made up the rules herself. But they all made sense somehow. Here, everything is... it's, it's complicated. Oh, I know. Rules everywhere. Why is it that Tom can't tell Philip that Jonathan is his son? He's so happy when he's around Jonathan. Tom's rules. And Philip's, probably. Tom believes he has lost the right to be Jonathan's father, as he gave up on him when he was born. That's what Martha said. And what about us? When will we tell other people about us? I guess when we're ready to play by their rules. <laughs> or they by ours. I guess. It's like trading wool. Is it? Trading wool is a bit like what my father did. Talking to people, negotiating, trading. It's, <laughs> it's fun, actually. Talking to people is fun. You listen to what they have to say, what they have to offer, what they're looking for. Then you come up with an offer where everyone profits, including you. I get it. We'll tell people about us when we come up with an offer that suits them and us. Right. And you should try to remember why Tom and Philip keep nagging you. They want the best for you and for themselves. Which is you. If you say so. I know so. I want the same. One day we'll tell everyone everything about us, Ali. All of them. Maybe not everything, Jack Builder. Uh, oh. oh. What's going on? We better go and find out. Everyone! Calm down! What happened at the quarry? Listen. Yes, there was an incident. Our friend Otto Blackface was hurt at the quarry. What happened? The Earl of Shiring had his men stop us from taking stone from the quarries and timber from the forest. Why? Why would Percy Hamley do that? All we know is what his men told us. That the Earl of Shiring will not support the construction of Kingsbridge Cathedral anymore. What are we going to do now? I will write to Shiring myself and I will talk to Percy Hamley. Oh, that's all good and well. But how are we supposed to continue working without stone and timber? I want to be paid before you run out of money. I need to feed my family. Calm down. You heard the prior. He will talk to the Earl himself. And I've planned ahead for a day like this. You will be paid soon. And there will be plenty of work for at least another month. For all of you. I trust I Tom. I say we stay. And I trust our prior. I will prepare everything immediately. I'll be with you in a moment. What if the Earl won't listen to Philip? I need to talk to Philip. See me later at my house, all right? What about the book we wanted to look for? N not now. I, I think I can help here. I'll find the book. We will sort this out. And now, back to work. This cathedral won't build itself. And you, Jack, watch Jonathan. Oh, what again? Oh. 
It's gone. Where did it go? Hmm. There must be some kind of cavity behind that wall. The foundations and the whole crypt were part of the old cathedral. Who knows what secrets are hidden down here? Philip says he's only resting. <laughs> if Adolphus ever wakes up, he'll be in for quite a surprise. He's a long way from home. I wonder if I'll ever get to see a faraway place like Cordoba. Oh, it's gone. Hey, take back what you said before. What? What did I say? Oh, come on. You, you know what you said. About Aliena? Why would you care if I take her as a wife? <laughs> you don't get it, do you? Who does he think he is? <sighs> He's got it coming. I will do everything in my power to make sure you are paid. I know that you showed us mercy before when we had to flee from Earl's castle. My husband has worked here ever since, and we would like to be close to Our Lady Aliena, but we have no choice. Oh, Mary. The same goes for us, Mary. We all owe Philip much. I trust you, Father, but I risk my neck up there every day. My wife is right. If you can't pay, We'll have to move on. Kingsbridge is our home. I don't want to leave. Let me think of something. Maybe there's a way we can pay your workers early, Philip. But selling the wool at the fleece fair will take at least a couple of days. I'm sorry, but me and the other workers can't wait that long. Not now that everything is so unsure. Trust me, Philip. I'll think of something. Jack! You said you were done with your corbel. What I saw did not look finished. It's hard. I need time. I need it finished today. If you don't do it, Alfred will. That's my corbel. None of this is ours. Doing the carvings is the only job you didn't give Alfred to screw up. We should be thankful of the work we're allowed to do. And in our work, we must be thorough and steadfast. Thankful for what we are allowed to do. You are the one who wouldn't settle for less than a cathedral. You could have had other work, but no. For months, you remained steadfast, no matter the cost. When are you going to tell Jonathan about what happened in the forest? Ah, there you are, Cub. I wanted to talk to you. What is it? I'm afraid there's a lot of trouble ahead of us. From what I heard from Tom, they're trying to shut down the construction. They? The Earl of Shiring. Tom is under a lot of stress. If it weren't for him, it would already be over. Why are you telling me this? Did he say something about me? No. But I know that he just can't stand to see you and Alfred arguing. Just don't see why Alfred gets to do everything he wants. Alfred is a master builder. You are an apprentice. There are rules. They may not be my rules, but they are yours. If you want to become a master builder. Mm, maybe. Don't be angry, Cobb. I'm not. The Fullers down in Kingsbridge are having trouble with their hands. I'm not surprised. I could only do it for a few days, even though Aliena paid well. Here, take this. Ouch! Stinging nettle. <laughs> yes, 
and you need to crush it with a pestle and mortar and then make a balm from it. Cuthbert had a mortar, I think. The Fuller's hands will improve for a while. But only for a while. If they want to stop their hands from suffering, they need to stop fulling. Maybe you're right. Thank you. Hey, Jack, how did you like the stone I picked for your corporal? Mm, I like it, you were right. Now I only need to get better at carving. Well, give it time, Jack, you'll get there. Now, yeah, better get back to work. Who knows how long we can still work here. Hello, Cuthbert. I hope you're happy wherever you are. What do you mean? Wherever he is, he's lying right there. I made sure his wait for Judgment Day is comfortable. Philip thinks we might uh, go to heaven when we die. No. We lie in wait till Judgment Day. That's why I want someone good to bury me, to make sure I lie well. <laughs> well that, was, that was a long time ago. <laughs> My first night in the Priory. I'll bury you, Brother Arnaldus. Don't worry. Thank you. And thank you for looking after Cuthbert. Get up! The mortar won't mix itself! <laughs> the mortar won't complain if it has to wait until I'm done with me break. Well, the mortar won't, but I will. Oh, yes. <laughs> I bet there are more nests around. Did I complain when you've disappeared for the better part of the morning? You, that's none of your business. Now get to work. No. What's the problem? I'm taking me well deserved break. Well deserved. You deserve a good kick in your lazy drunk. Better a drunk than a bearded bastard. Come on then, kick me. Show me what you got. Please, this is leading nowhere. Think for a moment what other people would do. What? Who? Uh, Tom Builder. Now he's a hard worker, isn't he? True, he's a hard worker, that he is. But also the man knows how to take a break. And he knows when to give others room for a break. This is not your break. You've been taking a shit for half a day and used up yours. Now don't you start and ruin mine too. Oh, wow. Look at them go. When I take a break, you take one too. Has your wife been cooking again, eh? <laughs> How dare you! Go drink yourself to death! Brother Arnaldus. Good example indeed. That poor man is as good as dead. What's your excuse for lying around in the cemetery? What's your excuse for having a beard like a bear's arse? Get back to work! Never! And stop yelling! Never! The Subprior. Oh, don't get me started on Subprior Remedius. He is a hard working man. He is. And don't you doubt it. 
What? That he is a hard-working man! Who? Supran Remedius! You fool! <gasps> what? How dare they? How dare you? Shouting in the cemetery like heathens! But we... I... Silence! Do you have any idea how hard the work of a subprior is? How much devotion and painful work it takes to teach our novices, our monks? And you dare call me a fool! We didn't! No. Silence, I say! I will think of a way to make you two understand the kind of behavior I expect in this priory. I think they'll be busy for a while. We place our trust in you. We take you in. And this is how you thank us? Hey, can I read what you're working on? No. Remigius will get angry if I don't finish this. What is it that you're working on? I'm copying pages of the book Prior Philip wrote. We finished the original last year. I didn't know he wrote a book. Not many know of it. The content is... He's critical of the church and bishops. After his experience with Bishop Waleran, he studied about what he calls Eudicia Clary. Eudicia Clary? The judgments of the clergy? Yes. In the past, there were many cruel tests that were made to discover whether a man was guilty or not. The Lord was to judge them. These ordeals were called Eudicium Dei, the judgment of God. Some had to hold burning iron in their bare hands. Others were drowned. Some were burned on the pyre. And if they were innocent, God would save them. There'd be no martyrs if that were true. Even Adolphus would have been saved. Yes, God works in mysterious ways. The prior wants these horrible ordeals to become a thing of the past for cruelty only leads to more cruelty. But I heard of miracles, saints that survived burnings. True. However, Prior Philip believes these were not judgments of God, but judgments of the clergy. Eudicia Clary. Yes, stories and fake ordeals to redeem friends and allies of the clergy. Fake miracles by the church. Whoa, that sounds like Philip is asking for trouble. Whoever is accused of fakery and heresy will not be likely to respond well to that. But we believe Philip is right. This is the second millennium. We must finally learn from past mistakes. I'm looking for a book by Ovid. Oh, we saw some in Shiring and in Winchester. There are also a few copies in Salisbury, I believe. Which ones are you looking for? The Amores? Have you heard of that? Uh, that was one of the copies in Winchester, I think. Did you read it? Me? I... I, I don't remember. He did. Just a page or two. Sounds like the right book. And Winchester's not far. I should tell Ali what I found out. Uh, 
Ah, Jack. I knew you'd be back. Uh, just be careful that Remigius doesn't see you. But Philip said I'm welcome to read and study here. Not while we're working. Remigius insisted. I'll try to be quick. What are you reading? The Liber Regulae Pastoralis, the pastoral care. Pope Gregory I wrote it more than 500 years ago. We've made a few copies, some even in English. Prior Philip wants all English priests to be able to read their tasks and duties as well. Um, uh, Brother Marcus. Oh, Jack. What are you pondering about? I was just thinking about how my life would have turned out if it had not been for Philip. He saved me from Remedius' cane, and then he saved me from myself. And now, are you, are you happy living as a monk? Spending your time alone, never kissing anyone? I... I... <laughs> Philip says being a servant for our Lord is a decision you have to make again every day. Today, I decide to serve the Lord. Serve the Lord, as long as it's your decision. Come on, Jonathan. Let's tell Ali what I found out. Ranulf of Chester and his half-brother stole Lincoln Castle from Stephen. At least this is a chance for us to take it back. For us? Who is us? The whole of England is strangled by new taxes and torn apart by this senseless quarrelling. Senseless quarrelling? You still think I'm just playing around? No. I put my life at risk, Ali, for you and me. This isn't a game. I, I know that. Do you? It's an honour to be one of the King's Knights. An honour that costs a lot of money. Oh, now you broke it, Jonathan. Ooh. There's someone at the door. I'll be right back. Oh. Go play. Jack. Hey. So? Yes. What brings you here? I... Do you have a, a visitor? Are you jealous? Everything all right there? Uh, yes, it will just take a minute. Sorry, but... My brother is waiting. He has to ride back to Shiring soon. Ah, I see. All right. I just wanted to tell you that I found out about the book. What book? Oh, Ovid. You were still looking for that. Of course. Why wouldn't I? I don't know. I... It just feels like there are so many problems right now at the construction site. That reminds me. Could you tell Philip that I've come up with an idea how he can pay the workers? Oh. Uh, how? I'll buy up all of his wool and sell it on the fleece fair myself. But I need to go to Shiring first and get the money. Uh, all right. Um, I'll tell him. By the way, they have a copy of the Amores in Winchester. Oh? I think I know someone who might be able to get it. But first we need to make sure Philip gets his money and talks to Percy. Who? Percy Hamley, the Earl. Percy Hamley, the fat oaf. Congratulations, everybody heard you. So what? They're all bastards. I think I should be going. Ah, oh, all right. See you later, Jack? Of course. 
bastards. <laughs> You're going to have to forget that word really quick, little brother. So for them, you've got money, Ali. So you were eavesdropping on me. Great. That deal with Philip will help them and us, Richard. Robert of Gloucester is advancing on Lincoln as we speak. Tomorrow we will ride from Shiring. And what I need from you is money for a new sword and a gambeson. And I want my shield painted in Stephen's colours. Is this leading anywhere, Richard? You've been doing this for years now, and has the King ever considered making you Earl of Shiring? Not yet. But I fought side by side with him before. He knows my name, Ali. Oh. Oh, all right. I will meet you in Shiring, and I'll bring the money. Father Philip. Yes? Aliena says you can pay your workers. She has enough money to buy up all the Priory's wool and sell it in Shiring. And that way, you get your money earlier. Really? But you have to accompany her to Shiring. She has to fetch the money first. The sooner the better. I have to talk to Percy Hamley anyway. Thank you, Jack. Now you'd better get back to work. Tom wanted to talk to you. Oh. Hello, Milius. Jack. A and Jonathan. This is not the best of times. Brother Cuthbert could have been a little more careful in storing the apples down here. I'm sure it's fine, Brother Andrew. I am not so sure. Even the salt is damp. Cuthbert knew what he was doing. What is Brother Andrew up to? We will get a new cellar as soon. Andrew is preparing everything. Maybe they should get a new kitchener as well. Why? If what Cuthbert did was not good enough, then what I can do can't be much better. Cuthbert knew so much more than I did. One. Two. You miss Cuthbert, hmm? <sighs> I do. The thought of being here without him. You won't be alone. I'd rather be alone than spend the rest of my days cooped up in here with someone like Brother Andrew. Or whoever will be the new cellarer. Did you talk to Philip about it? <sighs> you know, I think I should. But Philip and I haven't talked since Cuthbert passed on. As prior, he always has something else to worry about. Three, four, five, six. There is a sausage missing. Why does Philip want me to read the Bible? He thinks that if you put that mind of yours to good use, you could be a great scholar. Are you saying I'm not putting it to good use right now? No, but there is still so much you could learn. No, there's not. Now, let's see. Here we go. Yes. Just a little more. Good. And now, uh, what? Milius? Yes? Do you know how to make a bar? Indeed. All it takes is some hot fat and beeswax. Ah, oh, thank you. 
You know, you really wouldn't make a bad monk, Jack. What, me? <laughs> I think that would be a problem. Why? You can read, you know about herbs, and you are good company. Is this supposed to be one? What? Here, in the corner. No, it's vinegar. It's vinegar. That shouldn't be here. What was Cuthbert thinking? Oh, Lord. Give me the strength to endure this without chasing Brother Andrew from my kitchen. I don't think I would make a good monk. Why not? Philip thinks so too. He told me. Never mind, wife. I don't need to be a monk to come around and talk to you, right? That is true. And I think I should get back to work soon. <laughs> Thank you for your help. Hmm, they have problems with their hands and feet. Maybe I can find a way to help them. Try this. Whenever did you find the time to make a bomb, handsome Jack? Don't you have work to do? Who would I be if I could just pass by ladies in need? <laughs> Does that mean you'll join us and do some filling? I have my own work to do, so that won't work, I'm afraid. Oh, of course. Suddenly you've got work to do. But I dare say, that balm works. My hands feel much better. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, ladies. Uh, am I really... Jack! What? <sighs> Come here, please. You wanted to finish your corbel, and I let you. But you didn't even try. I wanted to. Subprior Remy just told me you disturbed the monks in the scriptorium. Philip told me to practice reading. The Bible, not the kind of book you were looking for. Then you go and waste your time in the cemetery and the market, and in the kitchen, and chatting to the Fullers. I made a balm for them. I wanted to help them. You should have been working instead. Don't you know how close we are to shutting down the construction? If I'd not planned ahead, it would all be over now. But how am I to plan ahead if I can't rely on you, Jack? What? Watch out! Whoa. <sighs> Are you all right? Yes. Up here! Hey, hurry up, quick! <sighs> What's going on here? Your son thinks I dropped the stones. You were the one who pulled them up, weren't you? Of course. That is my job. He was probably angry because he might not get paid. Alfred, stop it. What? Peter, what happened? I I'm not sure, but there was a monk. He was wearing a black robe, and when he saw me looking at him, he ran away. Maybe it was him. A black robe? Are you saying this was my fault? No, no. I I'm sure I didn't recognize him. He wasn't from here. No. Peter dropped the stone and doesn't want to admit it. I assure you, a monk would never do such a thing. I don't believe him. I saw a monk in black in the market. Oh, did you? I was there too when you were. Tell us, what did he do when you saw him?
He hit a man. A monk did. I think we would have heard about that. I was there. That never happened. Maybe I remembered it wrong. Jack, take the rest of the day off. I don't want you two to get into another fight. What about the monk? We don't know that there was a monk. <sighs> Accidents happen. We'll check all the ropes to make sure there won't be another one. Excuse me, Philip? Philip? Hmm? I I'm sorry. Is everything all right? I was just thinking about my brother. Uh, what is it? Aliena is ready to go to Shiring with you. Then I must not keep her waiting. As we rode, Aliena expressed relief that Percy Hamley held court in Shiring Town during the Fleece Fair, and not in her father's castle. I had not yet confessed to Aliena that I blamed myself for her father's fate. I felt the guilt and shame starting to rise when we came to a large group of peasants looking as desperate as the refugees that had come from Earl's Castle back then. Philip stopped to talk to the peasants, and so did I. Of course he couldn't pass by people in need of help. Not even when he was on his way to try and save Kingsbridge from another attack by the Hamleys. Two of the peasants broke into tears and begged for food. Philip was mortified as they grabbed the hem of his robe and pleaded for mercy. They said they were from Wigley. They had illegally erected a mill and hadn't paid taxes to the Earl of Shiring for grinding flour. I bit my lip when they mentioned the title that used to belong to my father. As punishment, the Earl had destroyed their mill. Philip seemed unsure what to say about Percy Hamley's punishment for these peasants. I was less hesitant. I asked why they'd built an illegal mill. The peasants told us that milling taxes had doubled in their village. The peasants shouted and cried that the Earl had also burnt their fields, destroyed their houses, and taken their livestock from them. A few of them had even been killed. Philip told them to go to Kingsbridge for food. As we rode on, he said nothing. Maybe he had begun to lose hope that he would ever solve his problems with the Earl in Shiring. I had never trusted the Hamleys, but it seemed I had grown careless over the years. They had thus far kept their word to King Stephen, but now I felt I should have known that they would eventually break it. As I was thinking these grim thoughts, we passed by a gallows with two men dangling by their necks. An old woman stood by one of the corpses and snarled at us. The old woman looked at us like a cornered animal. Philip demanded to know what had happened. She cackled and shook her head. She continued looking through the dead men's clothes. She'd already taken off their shoes and found a couple of coins on one of the corpses. Only now I realized that someone had tied foxtails to the corpses. Their hands had been cut off and their faces were burnt. I confronted the old woman and called her a thief. The old woman cackled and said there is nothing wrong in taking from dead thieves. When Philip told her it was still a sin, she became serious and gave him the coins. She told him that these men were poachers who were caught by the Earl's men hunting in his forests. Philip rode on, and when I caught up with him, I could see that now, more than ever, he was determined to talk to Percy Hamley.
Aliena rode by my side without knowing that I had long been responsible for her family's fate, ever since I had made the mistake of trusting Waylaren by God. I felt like a fly in a cobweb. Every move I made seemed to lead to further calamities. But then I heard Aliena as she sped past me. Shiring, she exclaimed. <laughs> 